Well, welcome to Andover. Welcome to this week's show. Somebody said Andover is a bustling cosmo cosmopolitan town. It's wonderful, isn't it? It is. It's <laughs> absolutely wonderful. It's yeah. a bit cold this morning. It's only four weeks to Christmas, oh. which is frightening, isn't it? So, hence all the Christmas decorations up. We've been all over the place again this week, haven't yeah, we? We were. We even yeah. went to uh, Winchester this week. Well, yeah, what were you doing over there? Well, it was a, like a business success story, and yeah. uh, we got sort of facts through. I don't know, because we don't go to Winchester. Well, we actually go to Romsey. We go to Romsey, so yeah. it must be yeah. people that work in Romsey. So uh, they gave us the info, so we went across to see what it was all about. Yeah. That was good. What else did we do? We, um... Oh, yeah, don't forget the Billy Bear Drawing Competition. Get all those entries into Steve the Manager, Folly in Andover, SP103JJ. All you children got to do is draw Billy Bear, or your version of Billy Bear, and send it to Steve down there. Tony I and Steve will judge the entries on Friday the 8th of December. Well, that and the means I can't enter then? No, you can't enter. Oh. <laughs> then the prize is two, two adult meals and two children's meals, plus a whiz around the Billy Bear Fun Fair at the Folly. So, well done. Uh... Oh, I went up to the World Travel Market with Dave Bullis. That was that was hilarious. Was it? Yes. Yeah. Get crashed our way onto several stands, Las Vegas <laughs> and uh, all those places. Did you get any tra free travel tickets or anything? Oh uh, yeah, we did. But that's another story. Oh, but I see. Um, Dave Bullis interviewed a Las Vegas showgirl. I think he was very pleased. Why about does that. he always get the good ones? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, and um, we went to California and everywhere. We'll try and bring you a bit of that. Um, also, the BBC Children in Need concert in Salisbury. We interviewed Salisbury Tech College, who were filming it, and that was good fun. That was a good was evening, great, wasn't it? Great, great. Really enjoyed that one. Well done, BBC Wiltshire Sound. And Tony's going over to Salisbury to actually uh, talk to the Mayor, Ricky Rogers, about um, his Salisbury appeal, which is drugs related. I know it's been in the news lately, so um, we're going to be bringing news from Salisbury. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one too. Yeah. So any news you get, ring us on Andover 390. 390. Or fax us on 390. 391. I'm Al Grinley, and you're Tony Murray. So keep on watching the show. So it's Jason on camera. Grayson, Jason, have you not going to grow a beard? What do you think? He's going to shave it off tonight. Is he? Or his girlfriend won't kiss him. Okay. Son of Reg. Anyway. <laughs> Tony and I have come over to Salisbury to the Children in the Concert, 1995. It's great in Salisbury, it's isn't it? It's a great turnout. It's Sunday night. Normally I'm dozing off in front of the telly about this time of the evening, but it's great to be over here and a lot of happy faces here as well. It's but fun. they're doing Lay Miz tonight. We told you about that. Do you remember we filmed the rehearsals with our good friend Kevin Gover from uh, BBC, BBC Wiltshire? Wiltshire Sun. That's right. You yeah. said it better than I did. I did. BBC, I've BBC. been practicing, <laughs> see. <laughs> and what we're going to do now, without further ado, is go over here and meet everybody responsible. <laughs> right. What's your name? Katie. Katie what? Bath. And where do you live? So you know where to write all the fan mail now. And what's your name? Rosie. Rosie? Rosie what? Buff. Oh, your sisters. And why are you all dressed up as Pudsy? Kisses. Go on, you tell us, Katie. Mm. You just felt like dressing up as Pudsy, did you? <laughs> Well, because we're dancing for Salisbury Children in Need and we're doing a concert. Well done, well done. So we're coming to have a look at you. And you got on in a minute, haven't you? So we better, we better hurry up and get this interview finished with, haven't we? Yeah. Thanks for talking to us. I think we should meet Kevin here. Now, Kevin, Kevin was a man we filmed at rehearsals. I saw you singing at one stage, didn't I? Yes, you did. And you can hear it in all its glory tonight if you stay. <laughs> uh, stay. Oh, I shouldn't have told Sandy, my boss, that, because he doesn't know I'm singing oh. in this. <laughs> um, he'll think I want another job in the West End or something. So I've uh, got to be careful with this. But, but Kevin's from BBC Wiltshire Sound. <laughs> and... Uh, well done, thanks for all this, because without you guys it, it wouldn't have happened. Yeah, but with a little help from my friends as well, like Val Colton over here, and also Martin Jones and Ron Colton as well, because without the planning committee, without the eight months of hard work that we've been, you know, trying to get everything together over the last eight months, it would never have happened. I mean, there have been a lot of uh, trying to get things right on the way, but we're all happy now. We had a great show this afternoon, and hopefully it's going to be really fantastic this evening as well. Any news for tonight? Uh, I'm not as nervous as I thought I was going to be, actually, especially... You're nervous, singing. are you? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but, um, no, I, I had a really great time this afternoon, and let's hope this evening's as good as well. OK. Well, we Councillor Ricky Rogers, the Mayor. What do you think about the turnout this evening? Fantastic. Obviously, a full house. I get invo invited, obviously, to all the important functions in Salisbury, and this is one of those. Um, I'm really looking forward to the show. We were on TV last week, and we had a great response to that. <laughs> yes, we did. I, I met some of my friends yesterday who were critics and uh, not many compliments a lot of critics um, 
and obviously it was my first step into fame and uh, they're looking forward for repeat episodes. Can I, can I just say that after you came to the Moose Hall as well, so many people told us that they'd seen us on the television that it was great, so well done. Thanks That's nice that. to know, we're Salisbury's TV station, we're going to be here, you're not going to get rid of us, I'm going to go around here. So, <laughs> Val? <laughs> Are you enjoying yourself? Uh, yes. You now. said you were a little nervous just now. I am. I'm nervous about the show. Um, it went well this afternoon. I hope it'll go even better tonight. Oh, so, but, okay. yeah. Well, well done. Well done. <laughs> I'm going to go have a quick word with Sandy. Thanks for talking to us. Quick word with Sandy over here. Hi. Sandy, what do you do? Uh, I'm the managing editor of BBC Wiltshire Sound. Uh, Good for you. <laughs> I, really, I'm, I'm, I'm only here tonight to represent the BBC at this fabulous event because yeah. obviously all the money is going to BBC Children in Need. Yeah. Um, so I'm down here, I'm going to enjoy myself, I'm going to meet the people who are here to see it and the cast uh, and then later, uh, later in the month we'll get the cheque and it'll all go for needy children in Wiltshire. Okay, well maybe they'll show this little clip on the, the BBC, you never know. Well, you never know. You never know. <laughs> okay, well thanks for watching tonight. Join us in just a minute in the main auditorium, so see you then. Thanks very much everybody. Thank you. Okay, welcome to the main auditorium of the uh, Salisbury City Hall, as promised. And uh, instead of uh, actually showing you right now everything going on, we thought we'd save a lot of time because uh, we found that Salisbury Hi. College are here. Salisbury College are here, and we've got Philip Peel, who's, who's in charge of film and television at Salisbury College. So how are you doing? You understand you've been here all day. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, yesterday as well. Yeah. We set up yesterday, uh, did the dress rehearsal, which took... Well, I left after it was going for about three hours. <laughs> There's about 20 minute gaps in the dress yeah. rehearsal, but we've seen the uh, first performance uh, today, 2.31, which I think is mostly for the school kids in the area that come in, and that was really good. But uh, I was here for last year's one, yeah. and the evening performance really gets pretty good. Yeah. It's, uh, I was going to say, you've got a pretty impressive uh, lineup of equipment here for a college. Well, yes, the, the college, uh, the television at the college, uh, uh, film and television and photography has been going since. 1955. 40 years. Really? Yeah, that's right. So we've got a lot of people. We very much aim to get people work in the industry. So the people, the students who are working these cameras next year, I'm sure are going to be working in the industry. Who knows, maybe working for town TV. <laughs> well be, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not sure whether, you know, I mean, the, well, they get a bit of practice, you know. That's, that's good. Anyway, it's great. So um, what, we, what we're going to be doing, viewers, is bringing you a clip of um, what Salisbury College is going to be shooting this evening. So. Um, uh, we're gonna, obviously going to be talking to Philip a lot more during the year, seeing as Town TV is now in Salisbury, but uh, coming up right now is a clip of what they've been shooting. So um, take it away, Philip.
you very much. Goodbye. Well, that was an absolutely amazing show, Tony, and I hope they, everybody enjoyed that footage from the uh, Salisbury College, because thanks to them, they're filming it. They're fabulous, but to get me out of the chair on a Sunday night, Sunday evening, is, takes a lot, but I'm really glad I came out to see it. Absolutely brilliant, brilliant well, concept. And I, I guess what we should say is a big thank you to the sponsors for this event. And I suppose the bit, great big thanks goes to BBC Wiltshire Sound, who were absolutely brilliant. Kevin was an ace, and Sandy, and uh, the Mayor of Salisbury came along as well. Uh, Ricky Rogers, well done, Ricky. We should be working a lot uh, in future yeah. where, with these people, yeah. uh, like Ricky and, and well, Wilkshire Sound yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. and, and Spire FM uh, for right. these charity things because we want to get involved with the community a lot more. So that's right, that's suggestions it. are uh, uh, welcome on and over 390. 390. 390. 390. Well, fax us on 390. 391. But also to the rest of the sponsors, and we've got to name Southwest Trains, big. Yeah. Um, who are the train company operating into London's Waterloo Station. I'm going to thank the Royal Mail. The Royal Mail. Well done, the Royal Mail. And Payne's Fireworks made sure it went with a big bang. <coughs> <laughs> it gets worse. It gets worse. It gets worse. And the New Hall Hospital. And if there's anybody else we didn't mention, well, you know, uh, sorry about that. But, uh, but anyway. a bunch of people here organising it tonight. And, then, yeah. and thanks the way they, they treated us as well when we came along. And we, really pre we appreciate that. Oh, Muriel gave a lot of help. She's a, a volunteer from BBC Watch the Sound. So yeah, thanks great. to the BBC. And uh, hopefully you'll all support the Children's In Need Appeal 1995. This is Town TV over and out from the City Hall Salisbury. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. See you later. We're in the Grand Jury Room in the Guildhall in Salisbury uh, and the reason we're here is to see the Mayor of Salisbury, which is Ricky Rogers. Now we know, uh, tragically, recently there's been a lot of problems with drugs, uh, which has come to the fore in the newspapers, you've seen it. Now, Mayor Ricky Rogers is doing something very, very positive about this. Uh, and I'm going to ask him exactly what, what his whole idea about preventing this problem is. Well, I, I think through my involvement with uh, particularly young people and particularly teenagers, I realised some time ago that we're never ever going to solve the problem trying to lecture and change the minds of teenagers. And, and my project, um, which I picked up from Life Education in London, is to purchase a mobile unit that focuses education, preventative drug education, in primary schools. So we, we actually get the message across to young people at a much earlier age. Right, so you're saying sometimes it's too late when you get to like secondary schools and things like that, so you're starting right from the infants in. Well, personally I think so. There are many worthy projects, the, you know, the, the drug and alcohol liaison projects, that try to tackle the problem. And I think that's all they do. We're spending resources trying to tackle the problem. Yeah. And I think we've got to spend far more resources on preventative work. So what's the best way of approaching this? Well, obviously, I think the school environment is the place to start. Yeah. And I think we've got to have something that appeals to young people. And this mobile unit of mine is fitted up with the latest high tech, the latest audio visio, uh, mannequins of the body. So it caps, cap, capture, captures young people's imagination. Right. How much is it going to cost to actually get the whole thing in? It up and running, if you like. The, the, the unit, um, initially, the capital purchase is £60,000. Um, sounds a lot, um, but if put into context, in, in, in Wiltshire alone, it's less than a pound per head of uh, youngster in Wiltshire schools. So I think it's very small. Now, I know you've got some way down the road with this. You've got some sort of commitment from, from people. What, what was that? Well, my, my appeal broad project stands at around £10,000 at the moment. I've got another seven months to run. I've also persuaded the local education authority to pick up the most important uh, element of, of this appeal, which is the future staffing and running costs. Mm -hmm. um, so that's secured. All is I've got to do is to raise this initial capital purchase. 
which is sixty thousand pounds. Sixty thousand pounds. It's not that much, is it? Well, I think it's it's a small price to pay if we can do anything to uh, prevent the tragedies of last week happening again. Well, indeed. So what, what will happen with this? It will go to a school for a day? It will go to a school. There will be several lessons from uh, students from within that school. It will then remain on the school for the evening for parents to come along, mm. see exactly what the youngsters are being taught, and it will then move to another location, another school, and it will do a tour of the whole of the county. Yeah, now in our Comtel franchise area, can it go all around that area? Well, I would hope that it's available to to the, you know, the whole community and that, that really goes outside Wiltshire as well. Yeah. Um, if other schools outside the Wiltshire area would like to buy in, would like to help contribute towards the, the cost of this, then I'd be delighted to hear from them. Ricky, this is great. It really is good. Now, we've got a video that uh, Ricky's gone along with. I, sh I shouldn't keep on saying Ricky, it's Mayor Rogers is going to loan us this video, so we're going to screen this video. So have a look at this. Thanks a lot. Many thanks. A child. Let us call her our child, for she is part of our world and represents our future. Our child is fortunate. Unlike many of her contemporaries, she has a loving family and is well cared for. Yet there is an enemy that waits for this child. One she will have to face alone, with only her own resources to save her. An enemy who threatens even well-loved, well-cared-for children more immediately than guns and bombs. Life education centers were established to give positive and lasting resources to children through their formative years. To help children resist drug misuse, life education uses a positive approach. Tell me, we've been talking about the body and how it works. What's something else that actually goes into the body apart from food, water and oxygen that will change the way the body's working and our bodies are working. Yes? Medicine from the doctor. The, the things in coke and coffee. Cocaine. Alcoholic. Nicotine. You mentioned a couple of drugs like nicotine and alcohol. Let's have a quick look where a drug will go actually inside the body. Straight down the food pipe into this. What's this? Equally important, we want children to understand that to look after themselves, they must think for themselves and develop their own potential, often in the face of seemingly irresistible pressure. Why would somebody take their first cigarette? Friends. Um, sometimes friends will convince, convince them. Mm -hmm. Right, good point. Tease them. <laughs> if you don't smoke these, you won't be cool. Everybody take the mickey out of you. No, thanks. No, really, I don't want them. Hey man, it's a fashion. It smells real good too. Anything to hurt? No, I've tried them. I don't like them. They also look cool, dudes. They walk around like hard men. I've got to catch a bus. I'm going to be late. Uh, my mum's going out tonight. Brilliant. Have of applause, don't you think? <laughs> How difficult is it to be on your own in front of a group trying to persuade you to do something? Very hard. Really it's is, isn't it? For older children, a positive approach to the problem of AIDS. The immune system, along with the necessities of life, our blood carries with it many different defenders. It is the T cell that initiates and regulates the complex events called the immune response. Life education has met with an enthusiastic response from children, teachers and parents. From 5 to 12 year olds have been in this unit and the whole awareness of all the age groups has been heightened by the models, the visual aids, the stimulus that it's, it's created and the programs have been most appropriate. We all want it all the time to reinforce as Anne-Louise says. 
the very basics of how one's body works and how, how things affect our body. After all, it's the most precious thing everybody has. Over one million children worldwide participate in this innovative and effective program each year. But this is only scratching the surface. We are fighting an enemy which is everywhere. We can win, but only if we make the commitment to do it. Life education centers need your help to keep the world safe for our children. We're still in Salisbury at the Guildhall Square. We've just been to see the mayor, and with me today, and with the, the whole crew, was the new general manager of Comtel, who's Ken Ayling, and uh, he's doing a great job. Ken, it's lovely to see you again. Hi, Tony. Good to see you as well. How was that? You came to the meeting with us with the mayor. Now, what did you think about that? Well, uh, I was actually quite amazed. I think he's uh, taken on a charity that I think is quite outstanding. He requires £60,000, which seems really quite a modest amount, uh, particularly when I believe they raised £6 million to renovate the cathedral here. £60,000 to me seems nothing by comparison. And we're going to do the best we can to help with that, aren't we? We are, and uh, certainly as far as Comtel is concerned, uh, as you know, we're hoping to have a regular feature on Town TV uh, to keep the Mayor's momentum going, and uh, certainly Paul Hobart and ourselves are going to see what we can do to enhance this uh, very worthy cause. Right, Ken, tell us a bit about yourself. I know that you were somewhere else before you came down to Andover, Stroke Salisbury area, Stroke Romsey, spoke, uh, Stroke Ainsbury, so where were you before that? Well, immediately prior to coming to Andover, I was responsible for uh, starting the project up in Oxford, for the Oxford franchise, uh, where we've already started to build the network and it's going very well. And uh, we've handed that over to a general manager now in Oxford, and uh, I've come down to uh, continue the process in uh, the Wessex franchise, uh, looking after Andover, Salisbury, Romsey uh, and Amesbury. So how is it going so far? Uh, it's going fine. Uh, we've had a few things that we've had to get done, uh, not least of which we've uh, replaced our computer system, uh, we've introduced the telephone uh, service as you're probably well aware and uh, we're having to build the network in uh, fairly difficult terrain at times but I think we're, we're going well now. Uh, I think some of the initial problems we had connected with our old computer system are going away and uh, I'm looking forward to a fairly bright future, I think. Well, it looks as if it's going to be good because we had a lot of people phoning our office from Salisbury and from Amesbury, but Romsey has come on quite recently, hasn't it? Yes, uh, we released the Romsey area for the first time uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the take-up has been excellent and uh, Paul and his team are, are down there now and uh, we're getting a very healthy response to the service that we're offering. Ken, thanks for talking to us today. And if we can uh, have a chat with you every now and then to update us on how Comtel are doing, maybe come along and do it for us, will you? I'll be delighted. Thanks, Ken. Right, we're down in the uh, Winnall Industrial Estate in Winchester. We, we got some news that there's something major happening down here uh, as far as industry and jobs in the future as well, I suppose you can say. And I have with me today Mr. Signal, Mr. Dick and Mr. Fielder. Uh, Mr. Dick, may I call you Michael? Yes, please. Michael, can you tell us what's happening here today? Yes, certainly. We've delighted to say that we've just completed a series of quite lengthy and detailed negotiations whereby a major investment is made in polymeters. Uh, this is from our company or associate company with whom we've been working and cooperating for a number of years very successfully in India. This is Mr. Singhal's company, Secure Meters Limited of Udaipur in India. And so what's happening, it, it, it's some sort of a, a getting together of the two companies, this is how it happens? Yes, uh, Secure Meters and PRI have worked uh, in the past for a very long time. And Secure Meters is now investing about two and a quarter million pounds in the equity of PRI. And what this means to PRI is essentially that PRI will be able to internationalize its business, uh, increase exports, and with that investment, hopefully, this company will grow and should probably mean more jobs in the area. 
Well, that's great news for Winchester, obviously. And uh, John, I call you John as well. John, you've been here for a long time. What was your role here initially? The very beginning, right at the very start, 1988, when we came to Winchester for, to start with here, uh, we, and I brought with it the technology which is, on which the company is based. But I now leave it to these gentlemen to develop it. <laughs> <laughs> We're very excited about what this means, as Mr. Single has already explained. We expect to grow by about 30 or 40 people in the next couple of years, and most of those will be skilled technicians and engineers. And I think they'll have a very very beneficial effect in the employment of skilled engineers and, and craftsmen in this area. So will you be working here or will you be working in India? Yes, uh, I will be working here. I've, uh, I will be the managing director of this company yes. and uh, I'll spend my time here. Yeah. Well, it's a lovely place to work because we we've had a look around and it's a very pleasant environment and everybody seems to enjoy working here so can I have a job? No, I didn't mean that. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, thanks very much for talking to us today and may we talk to you for an update in six months or so? Most certainly, yes. It'd be a great pleasure. Yes, Thank you very absolutely. much. Thanks great. very much. Indeed. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that piece from uh, PRI over in Winchester. If uh, you've got a local success story for your business, uh, whether you're an employee or the MD of the business or whatever, ring us on Andover 390390 or on our new numbers, that's Salisbury 555222. Ring us on either of those numbers and uh, we'll come, come and cover your business. So. Do that right now, because I think it's really good to have local businesses being supported in this way. So the whole of the Wessex area is at your disposal through Town TV Broadcasting. Okay, thanks for watching the show. Do you ever find some TV a bit monotonous? Well, why don't you get hold of a camcorder, take something short, imaginative, inventive, or bizarre, and send it in to take over TV. P.O. Box 4089, London SW17 7XE. Oh, shut up, you silly monkey. Nice. Call us for more details on 0171 971 0470. Hello and welcome to the Fred Juice Club. Last week we come down and speak to Colin Monk, who's an international dart player. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it because of work commitments. But this week I've got Colin with us. Welcome all right, then, Roger. Thanks for speaking to us, first of all. Um, how long have you actually been playing darts? Um, I've been playing darts for about ten years, but seriously for about six. Now you're ranked uh, number seven in the world by the is it the BDO? That's right. Yeah. Uh, now can you tell us a little bit how you actually get to be ranked number seven in the world because. It just doesn't come overnight, does it? Well, no, that's right. You've got to, um, you've got to do the uh, European tour. That's mostly sort of like Finland, all the Scandinavians, British Open, Women World Masters, and obviously the Embassy if you're qualified. Now, travelling to Europe to get your ranking points costs money. What about your sponsorship? That's right. Um, I'm sponsored by uh, Gay Warton, which is Perfect Print. He sponsors me uh, sort of the money I need to go away. Now, what about other sponsorship? Would it be? Does he sponsor you all the time, or could you do a bit more backing? Um, yes, well, I could do a lot more backing. Really, um, Gay helps me out as much as he can. He just started his own business, like so. Um, if there's anybody out there like wants to sponsor me, I'd be uh, much appreciated. Well, I'm sure you know it's a good good sponsorship to, to back, especially in the form you're in at the moment. Now, do you work full time? I work full time for St Ives at Andover, which is Andover Press. They let me have a, a lot of time off work to do the darts. And playing darts at your level and working full time. St Ives, is it hard to combine the both? Well, yeah, it is. it's up very hard, but um, like I said, the manager, she knows the crack and she's all right, has let me have the time off when I want to really. Now, what about um, during the week? How many times a week do you play darts? Because I know you play for different teams and different yeah. leagues. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I play for uh, I play for the Fed Juice on a Tuesday and um, I play for Sutton Scott Me on a Friday, which is the uh, East East Super League, and I play um, on a Sunday for the Andover Super League team. So you're quite busy then? I'm quite busy, yeah. I try not to do it too much. Now, tell us a little bit about the, uh, the Embassy World Championships. You, it's coming up in January. You've been there a couple of times before? 
I've been there twice before, yeah. The uh, first time was 1994. I had to qualify from uh, 200 people at Earl's Court. That's eight players that had to qualify there. And I got through. And um, last year I qualified eighth seed from you know, the European Tour, really. So it's, uh, it's, a, you know, it's a big event for you. Um, last couple of times, how did you get on? Um, first year I went out second round to uh, Steve McCullum. And this year I uh, went out to Raymond Bernard in the quarterfinals. Now I went up, I watched it on the television like a lot of people in Landover, give you a bit of support. I saw a lot of the lads, you know, yeah. supporting you, they're making a lot of noise. How, how, do you, how do you actually feel sort of, I know it's bad enough playing darts at this level, but when you're up on the stage, millions of people watching you, especially people from Andover, you know, cheering you, how, how do you actually feel? Um, well, a lot of people ask me this really, and um, when you get up on that stage, you're sort of like, you go into a tunnel vision really, you know, you cut it all out, but when you win a leg, then you sort of turn around and you sort of, and then you know, all the support and everything. But apart from that, I think the, you know they all go there, take the kids, I think they put the video on, and they can all watch themselves. Then you know, have a bit of a laugh. Yeah, exactly. Now to get your ranking points, tell me a little bit about your ranking points because to get number seven in the world, you have to play a tour, a European tour, more. Right? That's right. Yeah, it's sort of the same as golf, really. You know, all the lads sort of get on an airplane and you go to Finland, Denmark, wherever, and that's how you get your points. You see. And over this, you build it up, and then. It's, you qualify for the MC World because you obviously don't have to qualify now, do you? No, I don't have to qualify. I mean, like I said, I'm seventh seed this year, and um, you know, hopefully things will go well for me. Really, are you good enough to win it? Um, on my day, people who are watching play darts, if I can get the act together, then I could. Well, I won't say I'll win it, but I'll go pretty close. Now, last year, I watched it on telly, and uh, I've got to ask you about this because everybody does. Uh, the BBC made a big thing about you looking into the mirror to psych yourself up. You got yeah. a lot of stick, I know you did. Can you tell us a little bit about? It? Yeah, that's right. Um, the thing is, this before I was going to go out for the, uh, the quarterfinals, I happened to look in the mirror and uh, Mike Gregg was behind me and he said, what are you doing? I just said, well, I'm just trying to psych myself up a bit. And the BBC got hold of it and they put a big camera behind me and they said, well, they said, you know, look into the mirror. And apart from that, I've took a load of flack since then, really. And they'll probably do it this year at the oh, MC? Yeah, they'll probably show it again, you know, show me what right up again, but it's all good fun, really. And what about um, your biggest win so far? Which, what's your major sort of trophy you won so far? Uh, it was this year, funny enough, it was the Denmark Open I won which is, you know, a big prize, get eight points for that. And then 1989, I won the uh, John Ball Pairs of England with uh, Pete Ayner, which is a you know, big scale for me, really. And your biggest ambition? What, I mean, you come this far, what's the main ambition at the moment? Um, well, it is really to win the embassy, but before that was to become an England international, which I am, and uh, to win a major, which is the Denmark. So now to round it off would be obviously the MC really. Last year, a lot of players broke away from the BDO and formed another tournament, which yep. is played later on in the year, I think. Can you tell us a little bit why they've broken away? Uh, they, I think they broke away because they thought that they should be sort of the last 16 without playing up-and-coming players, so they're guaranteed money and things like that. And that's why I think they broke away, that's why. So some players have stayed with the BDO and another player... A lot of people stayed with the BDO. I mean, Mike Gregory went with the WDC and then he pulled away and he's come back to the BDO. So, you know, I'd rather be with the BDO, to be quite honest. Well, yeah, well, I hope you do really well, and I'm sure all of Andover, uh, I think I can speak for all of Andover, really wish you the best of luck, and I hope you do well at the MC World Champs, and appreciate you talking to us tonight. Well, my pleasure, Roger. Best. Cheers, well done, mate. mate. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Before we go, I've got some uh, football results to give you. These were the games played on the 18th of the 11th, 95. In the Southern Premier League, Salisbury 2, Hells Own 3. In the Juice and Wessex League, Woodchurch 1, Bournemouth Poppies 1. East Cows Vix 2 and over nil. In the Hans, North Hans Senior Cup, New Street 18, with Church Reserves nil. Yes, I said 18 nil. Uh, Daniel O'Connor scored six in that game. He's also scored 26 goals this season. I've got one rugby result to give you in the Bass Hampshire Cup, Totonians 8 and over 19. If anybody wants me to read some sports results out for them, especially the women, because just lately we've been covering a lot of men's sports, so I know that. Phone 390 399 ask for me, we'll put some sports results together and read them out to you. Especially, as I say, especially the women, like netball, so don't be shy, phone 390 390 and we'll put it together, because we can't do it without you. That concludes all the sports and thanks once again to Colin Monk for speaking to us. Uh, see you next week, bye bye for now.
All good afternoon or evening. It depends on what time you're actually watching. I'm with Mandy, she's yep. a sales assistant. We're actually in our price today. Mandy, so what's the biggest thing happening at the moment? Um, the anthology of the Beatles at the moment, double album. Got that in Tuesday, so hopefully it'll be a bit of a seller. The sales are going at the moment? They're, they're, they're going quite steady, but we don't know sort of until Friday or Saturday we get our main sales on those two days, so we'll know sort of at the weekend how it's going to go. So what do you think about what's Christmas, what's that going to be like? Um, hectic, I should imagine. Um, I mean, we've got top sellers. Uh, we've got Simply Red album. We've got Madonna. We've got Oasis, Robson and Jerome. It's 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 never ending, really. There's a battle. Oh, you got the the Oasis and Blur battle at the moment. I mean, that's a big thing. At the um, moment, that's I think that's sort of been and passed, really. That was the single, and once the single both released and and whatever, it, that that was it. It was just the one single. It's not sort of a battle now over the albums or anything. It's just a single, so. So what are single sales like actually at the moment, I mean, compared to, say, I don't know, about a year ago? Um, in, in comparison, I'd say that it probably has dropped just slightly. Um, probably because, I mean, albums are obviously a bit cheaper to, to buy, mm. I mean, than, than a CD single or whatever. But no, they, I mean, they're steady. They still get the customer wanting a single all the time, so... Because MTV have got their awards coming up as well, haven't they? They have, yes. So nominees, obviously, you've got a section for nominees of... Uh, not as of yet, no. Not as of yet, Not as of yet, no. You will be putting one out, I suppose. We probably will be, yes. And obviously the Brit Awards is another one that you, you cover quite yep. extensively. Yeah, and Smash It's pulling his party as well. Smash It, <laughs> Smash It's lovely, Smash It's for you people out there. <laughs> but, I mean, personal taste in music, I mean, what sort of music do you like to listen to? Uh, me? Yeah. Wide range. Dance music more than anything. John Lennon. Um, Everything really, hip hop, rap, everything. Hip hop and rap. Yeah. So, what do you actually? What, I mean, what do you think of the Beatles? Um, the Beatles, personal opinion, are not too, not too powerful. John Lennon as a person was better for me, I think. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you sell videos as well. I mean, what's yeah. the top-selling video at the moment? Um, it's uh, probably um, Robson and Jerome, PJ and Duncan, really, at the moment. I mean, interview with the film. We've got a few, few videos over there. So you know, like the, like it's the, just sort of like the top ten, really. Sort of the mainly sell up and down with all of them, really. Again, obviously, with a festive sort of thing in mind. Um, like you say, Robson and Jerome and PJ and Duncan are obviously going to be big sellers for yeah, the kids and Christmas little, presents and yeah. stuff, yeah. And then you are older people out there that like Robson and Jerome. I mean, 200, was it 125,000 so singles sold in the first week? <laughs> it's something like that. I mean, who is buying this? I mean, I hope I'm, I'm amazed. I mean, they've outsold Oasis and everybody, yeah, haven't they? I know. I mean, Oasis are like the biggest band at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, they, yeah, they are. They're, they're, they're very good. I extremely rate them, I think. What oh, Steve's on about Max Bygrove? What about Max Bygrove? <laughs> what do you think of Max Bygrove, Steve? Come on. No comment. No comment. I mean, he's just going to be sort of like, not going to comment on anything. Steve's said, Steve's a, a fashion disaster area. He's probably the same with music as well, but I mean, <laughs> we don't go into that very much. <laughs> Frank, <laughs> Zaffer, Frank Zappa, Frank yeah. Frank Zappa. Uh, the much must was it much missed Frank Zappa, <laughs> indeed. But um, I mean the new formats that are coming out, mini discs and things like that. I mean, do our price intend on selling that sort of thing? As um, well? Yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously there'd be a part of that, but obviously depending on our store size, we can't. I mean, as you can see, computer games aren't being stocked here, but no. in a majority of other stores, they are being stocked. Mm. But it's just space, and you know, being able to to put it out somewhere. That's mm. all. Because Enya's got a new single out this week, hasn't she? She's well. got, um, she had that out last week, actually. Last week, last week. Mm. It's actually in the chart at the moment. It's in the chart at the moment. What a wally. <laughs> um, I mean, that seems, well, that's selling quite well. It's getting a lot of airplay as well. Yeah, I mean, it? her album was released on Monday, so, and that's been doing fairly well as well. Another big seller for Christmas, you reckon? Powerful, powerful mm. album, yes, very powerful. Mm. So, what other stuff, what else have we got in? I mean, the Michael Jackson history album, I mean, that was released some time back. I know yeah, about that that's, one. Yeah, that's been doing well. I mean, he's released, he's got another single due to be released at the moment. Um, I think it's Monday or following Monday, something like that. I've just seen the video for that. I mean, that's quite impressive. That was on impressive. top of the pops. It was I mean, powerful, an impressive wasn't video, it? That. I mean, it's, I mean he's, one, he's not renowned for his video, yeah. video work, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, it was, it was extremely good. It was extremely good. <laughs> well, Mandy, thanks very much for your time. That's I know okay. you've been very busy today. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, well, anyway, I'll um, probably see everybody again shortly. If I don't see you before Christmas, have a nice time. Don't get drunk. Well, do get drunk. But um, all the Salisbury viewers, see you again on the 15th over at the Market Inn in Salisbury. Thanks very much for your time. And my name's Dave Bullis. Ta-da for now.
The famous walnut tree at Appershaw is the place to be and be seen. Fabulous food from a chef extraordinaire, delicious fine wines and a range of real ales including the local Hampshire brewery. Make a reservation now on Andover 772-626. Hello, I'm Ben Wilson with a roundup of the news from Andover, from your local weekly newspaper, the Andover Advertiser. The leading story of the week is about education, and two private schools in Andover are among the top five in Hampshire according to new government league tables just published. Both Rookwood School in Wayhill Road and St Benedict's at Penton Musey were among the league leaders, each of them scoring a 100% GCSE pass rate. Of the 228 schools surveyed, John Hanson School was in 82nd place, Winton School in 102nd place, and Haraway in 105th place. All three of these town schools had lower placings than last year. Crick Lake College was placed 12th out of the 22 colleges in Hampshire. Meanwhile, pupils at Portway Junior Schools have been learning how glass recycling saves natural resources. They were treated to a performance from the 615 Theatre Company, a group of touring players who specialise in getting over the message of waste recycling with such characters as Bungle the Bottle Hound. Vandals who twice wrecked a Christmas grotto have been branded as Rats of the Week. The grotto at Shepherd Spring Recycling Centre was smashed up during the night when the centre is closed. Site workers repaired the damage only to find it vandalised again the next morning. The grotto has been rebuilt once more and the site managers are hoping the vandals may be captured on security film which is being studied by the police. An inquest in Andover has been told that the probable cause of the crash of a light aircraft near Thruxton which killed four people was pilot error. The plane, which took off from Thruxton airfield, was airborne for less than a minute when the pilot raided that he was returning because a door had opened. But the aircraft never made the runway, crashing in a field and killing all four people on board. Verdicts of ac accidental death were recorded. A cheque for £50 has been presented to Ickneald School to buy a second-hand video to replace one stolen from the school's further education unit. The money was raised by a special drawer at Andover Police Station and was handed over to the headmaster, Steve Steer-Smith, by Sergeant Pete Curry. The battle continues to save Andover County Court from closure. The Lord Chancellor's Office wants to close the court in the Chantry Centre to save money, which would mean and over residents having to travel to Salisbury, Basingstoke or Winchester for civil justice. This week the Andover Citizens Advice Bureau and a local solicitor are calling on the public to help stop the move. The County Court in Andover deals with all civil cases in the area ranging from divorce to debt and from housing repossessions to noisy neighbours. And another fight is beginning at Charlton where villagers are said to be horrified by a plan to close the post office and store and reopen it as a takeaway food shop. The parish council is leading the battle to have the planning application turned down. The Andover Club for Physically Handicapped and Able Bodied, better known as the Fab Club, has made an appeal for new members. Since the club was started two years ago, the membership, especially among the able bodies, has fallen. Now more people are needed to boost numbers. Particularly helpful would be people who can drive and so help with transport. Anyone who wants to know more should contact the club secretary, Eileen Mills, on Andover 358817. And now some more local sport. Andover Golf Society held a successful charity day at the Sanford Springs Golf Course at Kingsclear recently, with all the proceeds going to the Wessex Children's Hospice Appeal. At the end of the day, a cheque for £6,000 was handed over to the charity, which is building a new hospice near Andover. Local cricketers have been getting informed for next summer at a six weeks course at the North Hants Cricket Development Centre. Club members between the ages of 11 and 13 have been polishing up their skills at sessions held at Winton School in Andover, sponsored by the Sports Council and Southern Electric. And finally, an annual charity fishing match at Andover's Foxcock Lake attracted a disappointing entry of 18 fishermen. Even the fish failed to oblige. On a cold and frosty day, over half the competitors failed to catch a single fish. However, the Multiple Sclerosis Society still benefited to the tune of £300. A fuller version of all these stories can be found in this week's Andover Advertiser. I'm Ben Wilson reporting. Hello, 
I'm Andrea Leary. Welcome to the Salisbury Journal News Review. A seven-year-old Bemerton Heath girl is recovering in hospital after doctors diagnosed the killer disease meningitis. The girl who goes to Pembroke Park First School was taken ill on Sunday with the same strain of the illness that has claimed the lives of five people in Lincoln. Parents of pupils are being urged not to panic and have been given leaflets explaining the disease and its symptoms. Unemployment in Salisbury and the district is continuing to fall. Figures released last week show that the jobless total for October stood at just over 2,500, a drop of 135 on the previous month. 48% of the area's total workforce are still out of work. An inquest has heard how a 28-year-old man was accidentally killed only days before his wedding. Ex-soldier Andrew Butler was driving to see his fiancée, Naomi Kimber, with a wedding gift when he smashed head-on into a bus on a bend near Boscombe Down. The usually careful motorist who worked as a van driver was said to be doing speeds of 70 to 80 miles per hour. A devoted daughter gave her dying mother the gift of life when she donated one of her kidneys. 24-year-old Sharon Down of Downton persuaded her mum, Dion Shergood, who had been on dialysis for seven years, to accept her kidney when she learnt the transplant was her only hope of recovery. Surgeons at Portsmouth Hospital said Sharon would continue to lead a normal life with only one kidney. An investigation has been called for after claims that deadly carbon monoxide leaked into children's bedrooms in two homes in Codsford's Rickworth Place. No one was hurt and the 40 chimney liners in the two affected properties have now been mended. But villagers want owners, Sutton Haystow Housing Association, to check neighbouring properties for similar problems. A Salisbury man made a horrible mistake when he smashed the windows of a complete stranger's car, believing it to be that of his ex-wife. 41-year-old Graham Howell admitted criminal damage to Salisbury magistrates and was conditionally discharged for 12 months. The closure of the Redland Public House at West Dean has sparked fears that the village could lose its community spirit and become a dormitory settlement for commuters. The landmark pub, which straddles the Wiltshire-Hampshire border, is to be sold as a private house after publican Mike Skinner could find no one to take it on. Meanwhile, unpaid volunteers at West Tisley, who formed a cooperative to save their village post office and shop from closure, have won royal recognition. The venture, which is open six days a week and ploughs profits back into the community, has won an honourable mention in this year's Community Enterprise Awards, chaired by the Prince of Wales. An anxious mother has branded the Wilts and Dorset bus company as irresponsible after a driver allegedly left her 11-year-old son stranded at a bus stop. She said Dominic Wolfe had been waiting for his bus to school at a remote stop at Warder near Tisbury when the driver flew past him without stopping. Bus company operations manager Andrew Bryce said the driver was being interviewed this week to find out exactly what happened. An all-weather hockey pitch for Salisbury and South Wilts Sports Club has come a step closer to reality after district councillors agreed to give it more cash if necessary. They voted to support the venture off Wilton Road after hearing that the original cost had risen from £250,000 since plans were drawn up three years ago. Fashion followers now have another clothes shop to choose from in Salisbury's revamped Old George Mall following the opening of chain store River Island. Salisbury City Football Club's poor run continued at the weekend when they lost 3-2 to Hells Owen Town. The Whites were ahead until the 92nd minute when they let in two goals, keeping them third from bottom in the table. Meanwhile, cricketing legend Sir Garfield Sobers stopped off for a pint with Shooting Cricket Club on Sunday. The former West Indies captain is on tour promoting cricketing holidays in Barbados. He spent two hours chatting to the Salisbury Plain team who planned to visit the Caribbean in 1997. And finally, a naturist club near Ringwood has applied for a license to host civil marriages, but naked weddings are not on the cards. The club at Matcham says bride and groom will have to tie the knot in full ceremonial regalia. The law says all marriages have to be held in public, but public nudity is not allowed. I'm Andrea Leary. Thanks for watching the Salisbury Journal News Review. Well, welcome back to the studio. That was a great show, wasn't it? Well, we think so. It hasn't finished yet. There's a bit more to come after this. A bit more of uh, Dave Bullis and myself up at the World Travel Market, making total fools of ourselves. I haven't seen that bit yet. I'm looking forward to this. You don't want to. No, I don't think. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget, we've got a new Salisbury phone number, all you Salisbury viewers out there, which is uh, Salisbury 555. 
two 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 five 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 two 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 that's right yes yeah, it's, it's a crazyism two 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 five 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 two 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 in salisbury <laughs> and don't forget andover of course is three nine oh three nine oh three nine oh three nine oh you can send us, or you can send us a fax on three nine oh three nine one so there we go right um yeah thanks for watching all you viewers getting calls from all over the place amesbury and uh, we spent a bit of time in salisbury this week with the mayor in fact jason next week is going up the spire Oh, is he? Yeah. <laughs> Bless him. <laughs> On the outside or the inside? I don't know. It looks very dangerous to me. But the inside, hopefully. <laughs> the inside, yeah. He's still shaking. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's going to be really good. So keep an eye open for that one. Right. Um, it's competition time, as usual, at the end of the show. And what did we do last week? Uh, the tank drive. Tanks full of memory. Oh, no. no not, that, that not, that chest, old, not that old chestnut. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's really worth £100, this prize. Our good friend Eddie Vincent over at Collingbourne Juices got these fantastic tanks chieftains and centurions and great big things and, and that's that was one of the answers and that's one of the answers yeah uh, name a tank beginning with the letter C and as we said it could have been what chieftains centurions churchills or all sorts of things and um, and you all knew the great escapologist Houdini Harry Harry Houdini so um, there we are so we had hundreds of people ring in faxed in what we're gonna do is plunge our hand into the bucket into the old golden bucket and uh, see who won it this week. Who's this lucky person? That's no, not Dave Bullis, is it? No, it's Dave Perks. Dave Perks, yes. Dave Perks, you want to drive in a Chieftain tank. And that's an Andover number. Well done, Dave. Dave Perks, you want to drive, I think it's most of the day, actually, so it's going to be really good fun. And uh, Eddie Vincent will look after you over there, and you can drive all sorts of things. That we may even film it, but uh, there we go. So well done for winning that one. This week, Chrissy's fixed up a £50 voucher from our, our prize records, yep. which is a really great prize with Christmas coming up. And you've all been watching the thing about the Beatles, their new album, Anthology, and all that sort of stuff. And for any of you classic you know, music lovers, you can also use those or buy those with this £50 voucher from our, our prize records. So well done, our prize. Right, three questions. These are musical brain teasers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Go on. Name the old crooner who sang White Christmas. No, it wasn't Tony Murray. Oh, <laughs> the old crooner. Name the old crooner who sang I'm... No. Anyway, that's... <laughs> Stop laughing, Jason. He's not the old crooner. And it wasn't his dad either. No. <laughs> no. Two. Name the Beatles' most famous album. It's, it's got a military connection above the rank of corporal. There you are. There's a little brain teaser. Name the Beatles' most famous album. It has a military connection above the rank of corporal. There's Steve, look. If you know where Steve was, he's just poked his head out of the edit suite. Because he's still working away on the show, isn't he? How did he get out of the edit suite? I thought I, you locked him in. I thought we locked him in and turned the phones off. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Steve. Say hello to Good your, morning. If, Good morning. If we don't show Steve on town TV, everybody wonders where he's got to. It's that light on top of the camera. I yeah. don't like being this side. Uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes. What are we doing? Well, what we're doing the... Um, we're doing the, uh, well, for, uh, the, oh, the outro. Outro. Right. That's a, it's a competition. Oh, the competition, right. You can, you can ask the, la the, the last question. Name the most famous reggae star of them all. Hey, his first name was Bob. Bob. Oh, Bob. <laughs> Bob Hope. No, I'll even know it's not, off, it's, it? not, it's not Bob Hope. Go on then, get back to your Bob editing. Off. Right, I'm, I'm go on, go on. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, so there we are. Name the old crooner who sang White Christmas. Name the Beatles' most famous album. It's got a military connection above the rank of corporal. Name the most famous reggae star of them all. And his first name was... Bob. Bob. There we go. £50 voucher from our price. Good prize. Good, Good prize. prize for Christmas coming up. Don't forget to send your entries into the folly in, in Andover for the SSP 10 3JJ for the Billy Bear competition. I want you all to draw your best attempts at drawing Billy Bear. Send them in to Steve, the manager. Folly in Andover. SP ten three JJ. How did I remember that? I don't know. Well, it wasn't bad, was it? It just sort of flashed at me from nowhere. Lord. So, uh, no oh, cues, eh? Town TV are going to be having their great New, Year New Year's Eve party, mm. the big thrash of all time, at the Folly Inn in Andover on New Year's Eve, and uh, we're going to be playing Still Crazy. Our old rock and roll band are going to be playing, aren't we? Yeah, we'll have to dust off the old guitars. Not so much of the old, he says. No, with no, well, the old guitars. <laughs> yeah, the old guitars. We'll get them out. We'll crank them up. A big bash at the uh, Folly Inn in Andover on New Year's Eve and still crazy going to be playing. So, um, right, what's next? Oh yeah, we all like a bit of reggae here at Town TV. 
And uh, what we're going to do is play you out with uh, Dave Bullis and myself. We went up to the World Travel Market, as I said earlier. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm looking forward to this. And one. We had some rum punch and all that sort of stuff, so watch out for that. So that's going to be really quite fun. So those credits are coming up right now. Thanks to everybody who's participated in the show. Salisbury, Andover, Romsey, and uh, the Tech College over in Salisbury especially. Yeah. Ricky Rogers, the mayor of Salisbury. We're going to be filming the Andover Christmas lights turning on, so that'll be fun. But ring us on Andover. 390. 390. Or Salisbury, 555. 222. Thanks for watching the show. Keep on watching the show because we need you to watch it. Ring us. Tell us what's going on. Okay. Bye for now. Bye now. Don't forget that glue vine tone. Oh no, the glue vine. Glue vine. Well done, Angie. She dropped us some glue vine. That's going to be... Merry Christmas. Really good. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Angie. Out of town restaurant, middle wallet. That's a good plug, Angie, isn't it? Thanks for the glue vine. Well, it's not all work, 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 is it? I mean, we've got to relax sometime or another. (laughs) Reggae, reggae. Come on, we're going to move this about. Come on. This man's a dancer here. Come on. Time TV brings in news from the world travel market. Brilliant. How are you doing? Once again, we're still in the middle of Earl's Court filming. A bit of reggae music. You want a bit of reggae music? Reggae, reggae music. Wonderful. Reggae, reggae. Punch coming up right now. Come this way. Come this way. This is the orange juice. Okay. Put a little bit of syrup. You've got to get the sweetness in. You know. A bit of syrup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we have to put in the main ingredient. The main ingredient. Yeah. Mangay ram. Is there enough left in there? Yes, there is, there is. So we just throw a little bit in. And then this is called the umpa. The umpa. This give, yeah, this gives it Angus the real yes, Angus, this gives it the real thing. Wonderful. That's absolutely super. Isn't it? You try that. It's sensual. You want to try some? Thanks for the camera, man.